How should history view Julius Caesar? If you are returning to the Classic Masterworks channel, welcome back. If you are new, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you will be made aware of our latest content. And now, on with the story. Julius Caesar was a highly influential and innovative leader who played a critical role in transforming the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire. He was a skilled military general and statesman, and he implemented a number of important reforms that benefited the Roman people. However, he was also known for his ambition and his willingness to use force to achieve his goals. Some people consider him a great leader because of his many accomplishments, while others view him as a power-hungry dictator who was willing to do whatever it took to gain and maintain control. Undoubtedly, as a military leader, Julius Caesar could be considered a good leader. He grew up during a time of political turmoil and factionalism in Rome, which led to violent purges of political enemies. In order to protect himself from threats to his life, Caesar joined the Roman army and quickly rose through the ranks due to his distinguished service and leadership skills. He was known for his ability to connect with his troops and for knowing the names of each and every one of them, which earned him their trust and respect. Caesar also made a point of being close to his soldiers, eating and sleeping alongside them and sharing in their experiences on the battlefield. This not only boosted morale, but also allowed him to quickly identify any weaknesses and make necessary adjustments to correct mistakes. His well-informed reports and effective military decision-making were key to the success of the Roman legions. Caesar also had a high tolerance for risk, and, as fate would have it, luck was often on his side early in his military career. Arguably his leadership abilities also were a large factor in his successes. Effective leaders are known for their ability to make rational decisions that are not influenced by their emotions or preconceived notions. Julius Caesar was known for his careful and precise military leadership, and he believed that even the smallest details could have a significant impact on the outcome of a battle. He was known for scouring every detail prior to fighting and for planning every move with great care. As he wrote, in war, events of importance are the result of trivial causes. Caesar also personally selected each soldier for leadership roles in his legions, based on his personal experience with them. His attention to detail and careful planning paid off, as he never lost a war in which he participated. Caesar was also an accomplished author and historian, and much of what we know about his life and military campaigns comes from his own accounts. He was renowned for his skills as an orator and was known for delivering powerful and persuasive speeches to the Roman Senate, his soldiers, and other leaders. Caesar was skilled at articulating his thoughts and ideas in an eloquent and compelling manner, and his use of wise and attractive language helped him to convince others of his viewpoints. Caesar was also known for his memorable turns of phrase, and his famous quote, Veni, Vid, Vici, or, I came, I saw, I conquered, has been widely remembered and repeated for centuries. Caesar was rarely one to rest on his laurels. As a military leader he was constantly trying to anticipate the worst outcomes and be prepared. He wrote, the immortal gods are wont to allow those persons whom they wish to punish for the guilt sometimes a greater prosperity and longer impunity, in order that they may suffer the more severely from a reverse of circumstances. Unfortunately for him, this awareness of his own vulnerability did not seem to play out on the Ides of March. He took on the role of dictator after he successfully fought a civil war and was able to gain control over the Roman Republic. After leading the Roman armies in the Gallic Wars he defeated his political rival Pompey, and subsequently became dictator. At the conclusion of the Gallic Wars, the Senate instructed Caesar to step down from his military command and return to Rome. In 49 BC, Caesar openly defied the Senate's authority by crossing the Rubicon and marching towards Rome at the head of an army. This began Caesar's civil war, which he won, leaving him in a position of near unchallenged power and influence in 45 BC. Caesar was known for his charisma and his ability to win the support of the people, which helped him maintain his grip on power. As dictator, Caesar was able to make decisions without seeking the approval of the Senate or the people of Rome. He also had the power to veto any legislation that he opposed and to nominate anyone he chose for public office. 
Caesar's rule was characterized by a number of reforms and policies that were designed to strengthen the Roman state and improve the lives of its citizens. However, his actions as dictator also sparked a great deal of controversy and resentment. There are several ways in which Julius Caesar acted like a dictator. Caesar was appointed dictator for life by the Roman Senate, giving him absolute power over the government and military. He used his military might to defeat his rivals and enemies, consolidating his power and eliminating potential threats to his rule. Caesar made sweeping reforms to the Roman government, including the creation of new offices and the expansion of the Roman Republic's territories. Caesar's rule was marked by a series of purges and crackdowns on his perceived enemies, including the execution of political rivals and the suppression of dissent. Julius Caesar is seen as the primary example of Caesarism, a form of political rule led by a charismatic strongman whose rule is based upon a cult of personality, whose rationale is the need to rule by force, establishing a violent social order, and being a regime involving prominence of the military and the government. He was the model for many others in history and contemporary life, such as Napoleon Bonaparte and Benito Mussolini who defined themselves as Caesarists. Bonaparte did not focus only on Caesar's military career but also on his relation with the masses, a predecessor to populism. The word is also used in a pejorative manner by critics of this type of populist political rule. Although he was eventually brought down, when he acted as emperor, in full control of the Roman government, Julius Caesar implemented a number of social and governmental reforms aimed at improving the lives of citizens and strengthening the state. He extended citizenship to residents of distant regions of the Roman Republic and implemented land reform and support programs for veterans. Caesar continued to be known for his ability to connect with those who were important to him, particularly in military circles, and he made a concerted effort to reach out to and support these groups through his reforms. He was assassinated in 44 BC, but his legacy has had a lasting impact on world history. Ultimately, whether Julius Caesar was a good leader depends on one's perspective and values. The fact, unforeseen by his assassins, remains that Caesar's death precipitated the end of the Roman Republic. In many eyes, this above all else, places Julius Caesar in a negative light in the annals of history. How do you think we should view Julius Caesar's place in history? Should his legacy be venerated or despised? Let us know your opinions in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you enjoy this content, let us know by liking this video and by subscribing to the Classic Masterworks channel. We hope to see you again soon.